Hi, my name is Ron. I'm the owner of Independence Vapors, which is a vape shop in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. We're located just outside of Philadelphia. I want to talk today about something that is becoming very popular in the uh, vaporization market uh, that I have great concerns about, and that is the use of nickel wire to do vaping and vaporization. So let me explain a little bit about vapor and how it works, and then you'll see um, where the nickel wire actually fits in. So this is a basic vape pen, um, and my explanation will apply to most vapor products. They all work basically the same way. You have a battery and a tank, and they come apart. This is the battery, which you would charge. The battery is variable voltage. This is the tank. Inside of the tank, the bottom cap comes off. Uh, there's a little part um, that's right here, and this is called the atomizer. Uh, and this is what actually does the vaporization. Now, this one is a manufactured atomizer. Some of the atomizers people can make themselves by wrapping the wire and putting in the cotton. On either side of this atomizer, there are little wicks. The wicks draw in the liquid that is in the tank. Uh, the wicks are, there's a wire that is wrapped around the wick. The wire gets hot from the battery, and that's what creates the aerosol that you breathe in. Now, it's that wire that is what I want to talk about. Now, the wire that has been used traditionally for a while now in, in the uh, vapor products is called Canthal A1. Canthal is a composite metal of three elements, iron, chromium, and aluminum. And this is some of the Canthal that uh, I, we sell in the store. Um, it comes in a number of different thicknesses or gauges, and that determines the resistance that the Canthal will give. That resistance is very important because what happens in the vapor product is that the battery uh, sends energy through uh, the wire and that's what heats up and that's what creates the aerosol and that's what creates the vapor. Without resistance you would just have you know a ton of vapor with you know uncontrollable vapor. Uh, what you do with this device is you can actually can because there's resistance in the wire you can control the amount of vapor at the bottom which is a variable voltage. Now, that's that product. Um, this is a, what's called a box mod. Uh, this has a little digital screen on it. You can control the wattage and voltage that way through this one. Um, this is my rig that I use. Um, it has a different style of um, tank on the top. Uh, this has a rebuildable atomizer, so I actually wrap the wire myself using the canthal and put in organic cotton. Uh, and you know, and this battery is variable wattage. Um, takes a, a pretty large battery called an 18650 battery, and this is what I use to, to vape. Um, the variable voltage and variable wattage that the batteries produce is important because this new method of vaping using nickel wire does not rely solely on the wattage and voltage. What it uses is temperature control. Now the um, Manufacturers realize that in order to uh, vary the amount of vapor and power coming out of the battery uh, through temperature, you needed a different kind of wire that would give accurate readings to the device. And so they decided to use nickel wire, nickel wire or NI200 wire. This is non-resistance wire. So wire that is made of 99% pure nickel does not provide that much resistance at all. You have to actually wrap the wire many times to get even a little bit of resistance. And so the amount of vapor is solely controlled by the microchip inside of the device um, that is regulating the temperature. The temperature generally is around 400 degrees, although the range of most devices is from 200 to about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And so you kind of choose the temperature that you want and then you get the vapor that way. So my concern and what I want to talk about is why is nickel dangerous? Why do I think nickel uh, is a very very bad idea to be using inside of vaporizers? Well first let's look at canthal. Canthal is a composite like I said of iron, chromium, and aluminum and if you think about those different metals We've used and continue to use those metals in cooking. We use them in the kitchen. Iron has been used by human beings for millennia to cook um, food. Um, chromium is the main ingredient of stainless steel. Now there is also nickel in stainless steel, but it's a minor ingredient, usually less than 10%. But the main ingredient that gives stainless steel its non-corrosive nature is chromium. And the other part of canthal is aluminum. And of course we cook with aluminum, we wrap our food in aluminum. 
And these are all metals that we use in our kitchens to cook our food and we have for a long time. And the reason is that when heated, uh, these metals don't leach. So the metal doesn't come out and get into our food generally when we're cooking using iron, chromium, and aluminum, which mixed together make the canthal wire that's used in the vaporizers. Um, we don't use nickel for cooking, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, nickel is not rare. In fact, it's the 24th most abundant element on the planet. So it's not like it's rare, the reason that we don't use it. You don't have a 99% nickel pot that you cook in. The reason is that if you had a nickel pot and you cooked your food in it, it would taste like metal. It would taste very, very bad. And that is because the metal the, actually leaches and the, the taste gets into it. Nickel generally is very soft. And in fact, nickel used for vaporization, uh, people have trouble making the coils out of it because it is such a soft metal. Um, and what I'm talking about is something that's pure nickel, like 99% nickel. Now nickel does have some industrial usage. We use it for nickel plating. Uh, we use it in batteries. Um, but generally it's not used in its pure form in our kitchens and homes. We really don't have that much nickel besides, you know, for the nickels of, you know, coins. And even that isn't 100% nickel. Um, part of the reason of that is that we don't really know the exact number, but it's estimated that between 10 and 20 percent of the population is actually allergic to nickel. And so manufacturers decided, rather than expose people to a possible allergen, they don't really use nickel for a whole lot of uses in our homes and businesses and things like that. The other problem with nickel is that when it is heated, it releases what is called nickel carbonyl. Nickel carbonyl is a highly toxic carcinogen, um, and research has shown that nickel carbonyl, when it gets into your lungs, when nickel gets into your lungs, uh, depending on the size of the particulate, uh, it'll stay there and it will cause cancer. So it's, it's very, very toxic. Um, nickel is, is a pollutant. Um, it's been linked to lung cancer, cardiovascular disease, uh, neurological defect, defects, and also high blood pressure. Um, heated nickel can also expose the body to free radicals, which can damage the kidneys and liver. Um, and if you look at the EPA hazardous substances list, and they list all the metals that are hazardous substances, nickel is on that list. Canthal is not, and nor are the ingredients in canthal. So iron, chromium, and aluminum are also not on this extremely hazardous substances list that is put out by the uh, EPA. Nickel is classified as a group A human carcinogen, and nickel carbonyl is classified as a group B2 probable human carcinogen. So this is something that has the potential to be very hazardous, especially when heated and then breathed in as a vapor. So have the manufacturers addressed these concerns? I've looked all through the internet. I can find very little about any manufacturers. The only thing I found was that uh, the company that kind of started this all is a company called Evolve, and they created a microchip called the DNA40. The DNA40 um, is a generally a very good chip, but it does have this temperature control feature that, re that relies on nickel wire being used inside of the atomizer or the vaporizer. Uh, they gave an explanation to a website called Taste Your Juice, which is run by an excellent reviewer uh, by the name of Phil Bassardo. Uh, they gave a number of explanations, and they were all, in my opinion, very, very bad and, um, and, and pretty irresponsible. Um, they first said that nickel is safe because there's no combustion and therefore no carbon monoxide uh, is being put out by the vaporizer. And that may be true but they did not address whether the nickel is actually leaching into the vapor when it is heated. They also said that we've been using another type of wire on and off for a while called nichrome. Now, nichrome is a competitor to canthal, and not that many people use it because the resistance is very low. Nichrome is about 80% uh, nickel and 20% um, chromium. Chromium is, like I mentioned before, uh, anti-corrosive. 
when you're looking at metal alloys, small changes in the alloy uh, make a big difference. So something that's 80% nickel is not the same as something that's 99% nickel. It would be like steel, you know, high carbon steel and low carbon steel uh, have different properties and if you're building something you need to know what the makeup of the alloy is and so to say nichrome is the same as the ni200 nickel wire i think is a false equivalency um, the other general attitude that i got from evolve's explanation was that's eh, probably fine which i think is horribly, horribly irresponsible. I think it shows that Evolve, who created the DNA-40, did virtually no testing on the vapor that's produced from nickel. At least I couldn't find anything on their website. I went through, I searched through Google as much as I possibly could, and they've given no explanation. There's no science that they've shown that nickel is actually safe to be using and that it does not leach at different temperatures. So in summary, um, the dangers of vaping with nickel wire. Nickel leaches when heated, and the extent of the leaching we just don't know. There's very little science, and no manufacturers have really shown that the nickel is safe. Certainly none of the, none of the manufacturers coming out of China have shown anything, and Evolve on their website, there's, there's virtually nothing at all. Um, how bad is it leaching? We really don't know. Uh, I've seen a number of reports of people doing the temperature control, and they're reporting a, a fishy taste. Um, from the vapor, and this fishy taste is probably the metal actually leaching into your vapor. The other question is that if you are allergic to nickel and you vape it, what happens? Do you get an allergic reaction? Do you get sick? Do you die? I think that's something that should be addressed, and people should be aware that if you have an, a nickel allergy and you breathe in uh, vapor that may contain nickel, what happens to you? Uh, does nickel react with the e-juice? Um, the thing about nickel, when you put it into a compound, is that it, because it is so soft, it is fairly water soluble. And so if you're adding vegetable glycerin, propylene glycol, and you are vaporizing it, is the nickel leaching? Is it reacting with certain juices? Again, there's been no study at all, so we don't know really how the nickel, this soft, soft metal, is reacting with the juices. Uh, what if somebody takes the nickel wire and puts it on a mechanical mod? Now, on a regulated device like this, uh, most likely the nickel wire won't fire because the resistance will be much too low for this device to do it. Um, but if you put it on a mechanical mod, which is basically just a battery and a button, it will fire. What happens? Does it explode? If you look at the Kanger Tech OCC NI200 nickel wire, uh, coils. These are manufactured coils from a Chinese company called Kanger Tech. It actually has a battery explosion warning on the back <laughs> if it's not used correctly. This is very concerning. You know, what hap you know, people need to really be educated about this thing and um, be aware that if you put this, which you shouldn't be vaping anyway, but if you put it on a mechanical mod, the thing could actually coil, could actually cause the, th the battery to explode. The other concern is that because nickel has virtually no resistance, you're completely relying on the microchip inside of the device to give you any type of safety and to give you the temperature control. What happens if your atomizer is not the same temperature as your mod or your device? Will it accurately measure the temperature? Uh, is the temperature reading too high? Is it too low? Uh, can it give you a burst or something? You know, if it's not manufactured right, you're really putting a lot of faith in the fact that this microchip is going to control the temperature. The nickel wire with, with very low resistance, um, a lot of people have reported when they're using temperature control, the resistance of the wire is fluctuating like crazy. Um, well, we just hope, I guess you just hope that the, um, you know, the device is working properly. And I guess that goes for any technology, but with nickel, I think it's definitely concerning. This is a very, very new technology and, uh, you know, really has not been studied at all. You know, just because we can do something doesn't mean we should do it. And if we're going to be vaping, it should be done safely. And uh, so let's take a look at nickel before, before it's too late, before too many people are using it uh, without concern or consideration for its possible hazards. Thank you.